to inform the court as to how it intends to deal with the matter before the hearing dates of the 29th and 30th July this year. Now, when you are last before you on the 28th of November 2023, one prosecution witness did testify. November 2023, one witness testified, and counsels for the accused person after the testimony of that witness, off the record, did ask the prosecution We look at the charges facing the accused persons. And on the 21st of February this year, I did brief the DPP on the matter. Through a brief date at the same date. The brief raised issues of evidential threshold constitutionalities of the charges before court. On 12th March this year, the DPP did direct that I do move this court to withdraw the matter. <coughs> March this year, after the DPP had given directions that the matter be withdrawn, and before we could move the court to have the charges withdrawn, on the 18th of March, six days later, the High Court sitting at Nakuru, Constitutional and Human Rights Division, in petition number E-016, 2023, delivered by the Honorable Justice Mohochi, did declare Section 77-1 as unconstitutional, Your Honor. The penal code.
also declared unconstitutional was section 377, 3A, B, C, D, E, and F, and G. The penal code. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Of the same act, you know. I have placed a copy of that authority on record. It is a reported authority. Yes, Your Honor. It is a, it's reported at Kenya law. Mm -hmm. And having regards that the sections declared unconstitutional are the same sections facing the accused persons before you, it stands that the charges before you with regards to all the accused persons have been nullified by that judgment. And we pray that this court be guided by that authority and stays at the same position and finds that the charges before court have been nullified by that position. Just uh, a brief rejoinder, and my colleague Mr. Omari and Ms. Nekesa will uh, just wind up. Your Honor, um, first of all, we are grateful to the Director of uh, Public Prosecutions. having uh, reconsidered his decision to charge. And for the communication that he issued on the 12th day of March, 2024. But Your Honor, it is important that even as you give your directions in this matter, that the submissions that we took, I believe, more than two hours to submit, Your Honor, on the 20th day of July, 2023, reiterated your honor in our submissions your honor we submitted very clearly that the arrest of the accused persons
was political, purely political, Your Honor. And amounted, Your Honor, to abuse of judicial process when they were arraigned here in court. Your Honor, it also signified, and today's submissions by Mr. Gashoka crystallized this issue, which is a very serious issue. The fact, Your Honor, that the decision to charge, Your Honor, A power solely vested on the DPP. Is supposed, Your Honor, to be exercised neutrally? and without any favor. <clears throat> Such that, Your Honor, the fact that the same DPP who approved those charges is still the same DPP. It was not the time of Nordin Haji. It's the same DPP, Your Honor, who has come on board. Oh, yeah, it is still the same office, Your Honor, I'm being corrected. It is still the same office, because there's continuation of office. It's still the same office, Your Honor, that has decided less than one year down the line. to take a different stance. Such that, Your Honor, even when courts of law are faced with such matters, Your Honor, it speaks loudly as to why the doctrine of innocence must always reign supreme, even when the checks and balances in our constitution fail. Your Honor, you'll have a chance to look at the decision by the High Court. And Your Honor, it is very clear. Your Honor, I want to put a clarification that, Your Honor, at the time the seven were charged. We did raise an issue that the office of the director of public prosecution was vacant. And I just lost the race. occupy that office, the one who succeeded was in parliament for vetting.
immediately he was sworn in as the substantive DPP. He wrote to that public officer to review <clears throat> the decision to charge the seven. Pursuant to Article 157.11. And that decision is what my good brother, the State Ashoka, has presented that the DPP made a decision to withdraw these charges before the High Court decision. Therefore, on behalf of the seven accused person, we thank the Director of Public Prosecution <clears throat> for making that bold decision supported by the Constitution and the law. Number two, Your Honor, the first accused person is a member of Parliament. He has undertaken to review the penal code. And move <clears throat> to either amend or repeal all colonial provisions. to avoid a situation like this one where Kenyans are arrested, charged, then we do applications for review. So that is the gift first accused will give the country. And unless the penal court is cleaned by parliament, It will be an abdication of the Parliament's mandate. Which now goes to the petition in Akuru High Court. My brother Okacha has called them the heroes. of the freedom of speech and the right to demonstrate. It is a momentous time in the history of Kenya but now it is loud and clear at Article 37 <coughs> is absolute. <coughs> every, every type of battle has casualties. 
every form of happiness. A few must shed their blood. The seven shed their blood and their liberty. for 55 million Kenyans. And the fountain of liberty and freedom shall now be the guiding compass for the new Republic of Kenya, where <coughs> fundamental human rights are protected. That's all, Your Honor. Your Honor, I wish to thank the defense team for appreciating the good work being done by the DPP's office. Only timely review of the decision to charge, which is in line with the DPP's agenda. But also appreciating that we do communicate. The Office of the DPP communicates its decisions, listens. And, Your Honor, you note that on the 28th November, Last year, when off the record councils asked the DPP to look at the charges, 28th November. Mm. Yes, Your Honor, made a decision. briefly, criminal cases evolve, and that is what led to the DPP making a decision to charge after the testimony of PW1. As at the time of charging the accused persons, Section 77.1 of the Penal Code was still the law. The same has been nullified. By the decision of the court sitting in Nakuru on the 18th of March this year. And with us, they have been asking the court have a look at that decision which is on record and find that the charges before you were nullified by that decision. Also, perused the authority of Katiba Institute and eight others versus the 
DPP and two others. High Court Constitutional and Human Rights Petition Number 016 of 2023, which declared the provisions under which the charges in this matter have been instituted as unconstitutional. And based on that decision, the application made by the prosecution is merited. The case is therefore terminated under Section 87A of the Criminal Procedure Code. Cash bail deposited to be released to the respective depositors thereof. Orders accordingly. You're welcome. Mwaka uliopita wakati wa maandamano ya kupigania demokrasia za taifa Babu wenu mheshimiwa aliweza kukamatwa na wengine sita na kuwekwa katika kizimbani katika mahakama ya milimani jijini Nairobi Tuliweza kueleza mahakama kwamba vipengele ambavyo wanajaribu kutumia kumshika na kumshtaki ni vipengele ambavyo vilikuwa vinatumiwa na wabeberu wa koloni ili kunyanyasa wa Afrika. Ni sheria ambayo ilipitishwa kule Marek kule Uingereza mwaka 1876. Basi hai haingeweza kuandamana na sheria mpya ya katiba. Hawakukubaliana na sisi basi tukawaambia kwamba katiba kipengele cha 37 kinamruhusu Kenya yote kuandamana ila tu asiwe na silaha na asiweze kuharibu mali ya mtu wale saba hawakuwa na silaha zozote wale saba hawakuwa na tishu hawakuwa tishu kwa usalama wa taifa lakini serikali ikaenda mbele na ikawashtaki Na tukawambia kwamba hizi ni siyasa. Mahakama ondokeni katika ulingo wa siyasa. Na kesi kama hizi tuliziona mwaka wa kuanzia mwaka elfu, mo, elfu mbili na kumina saba hadi elfu mbili na shina mbili wakati makesi zilikuwa watu wanakamatwa wanafikisho mahakamani kisha yule DPP tena anaziondoa. Koti iliweza kutoa maagizo makali sana, wale wakaweza kupeana hizo dhamana wakatoka. Kisha tuliwajulisha kwamba wakati ule mkuu wa mashtaka, DPP, hakuemu. Na fasi ile ule aliyekuwa pale, alikuwa shatoka, ameenda kuwa director general NIS. Kwa hivu, ule ambaye alikuwa na ngania kile kiti, alikuwa anangojea kuhojiwa na kupiwa msasa pale bungeni maamuzi yalifanywa bila DPP kuwepo basi alipoapishwa na kula kiapo cha DPP tulimwandikia tukamwambia kwamba sheria ambazo walitumia kumshtaki mheshimiwa na wengine zilikuwa ni sheria za kikoloni na haziko aliweza kuangalia makaratasi yale na kafanya uamuzi ya kwamba 
lazima mashtaka yale yatupiliwe mbali ule uamuzi umeletwa mahakamani leo na kesi ya mheshimiwa babu wino imetupiliwa mbali kwa sababu mambo mawili kwanza DPP amesema hana ushahidi wa kutosha na hakuna sheria iliyomo kuweza kumshtaki kuendelea kuwashtaki pili mahakama nakuru mahakama ya high court imeweza katika uamuzi petition ya kusema kwamba hakuna tena sheria ile ambayo walikuwa wanazitumia kumshtaki zimetangazwa kwamba zile sheria vile vipengele katika penal court ni haramu ni vipengele ambavyo vinaenda kinyume na katiba ya taifa kwa hivyo hakimu onyina amekubaliana na uamuzi wa DPP na ameweza kuondoa kesi ile mheshimiwa ameweza kusema mbele ya koti kwamba atakaporudi bungeni leo ataanza kuangalia sheria ambazo ni za kikoloni ambazo ziko kwenye penal code aweze kutengeneza miswada kuweza kuzibatilisha na kuziondoa ziondolewe kabisa kabisa taifa la Kenya la mwaka 2024 haliwezi endeshwa na sheria za mwaka 1876 Mheshimiwa babu wino amejitwika mzigo huo nakumbuka kwamba mheshimiwa kidogo hivi ameumia amewekwa ndani amelala jela kwa sababu ya wananchi hasa wa taifa la Kenya lakini zaidi wale wananchi ambayo ana roho ana azma anataka kuwakilisha kama governor mpya wa jiji la Nairobi mwaka elfu mbili na ishirini na saba kwa hivyo yeye ametoa kafara ile kwa kizungu inaitwa sacrifice kwa watu wa Nairobi akisema kwamba atafanya ile kazi sijui sana tutatoa wapi lakini tutaongea <laughs> wacha niachie wale wanaojua kizungu waweze kusema kizungu yao sasa <laughs> tumetosheka sababu tunajua kwamba hakuna ushahidi wowote ambao upo utakaopatikana kumbuka kwamba kesi ya rais William Ruto kesi ya rais Mustafa Uhuru Kenyatta na wale mababe sita kule ICC iliondolewa katika kipengele cha 87A hakuna chochote pale ni kumaanisha kwamba serikali kila wakati haitaki kuonekana kwamba ime imeshindwa vibaya zaidi kwa hivyo na sisi tumesema kwamba atakapokuwa governor lazima ajue kwamba sio lazima aweze kungangania zaidi na kuonyesha serikali kwamba ni mbaya zaidi today today is a, a day similar to the day that uh, the founding father of this country Mzee Jomo Kenyatta the Achieng Onekos were released as heroes from the colonial uh, uh, prison this is an equivalent day because section 77 is the same same section that was used by those colonialists to suppress uh, the will of the people the will of the Kenyans and it is the same same section that unfortunately the people in power today have thought it wise to use to suppress Kenyans today this section we indicated to the court when Moshimiwa and the rest were arrested that this is a colonial section that the constitution of our country requires even these courts to read these sections which are un which are unconstitutional as unconstitutional even before declarations by the high court such that today there was no need at all not only to bring uh, to uh, to arraign uh, our clients in court but there was no need of even hounding them from the airports from their houses and taking them around in fact with the withdrawal today we are very happy but there is one thing that will never be compensated that is the torture that they underwent my client mr gaucho here 
on the second day of arraignment, you could not know it is him. He was thoroughly beaten. But the same officers who beat people, when they are just pushed by a little boy, they are crying all over the country. <laughs> but it, it, it just tells you how unfair the, the Kenya is. So to that particular extent, it is important for people to know that today signifies the day that no one will ever be arrested on such flimsy charges of subversive activities. These are the things that the Charles and Johnjos of yesterday who thought that they were still Englishmen continued to perpetrate in this country. And those people are not there anymore. The people in power today are in power because freedom of speech, freedom of association was respected. Otherwise, we will not be having the government we have today. So it is only incumbent upon them to respect that Article 37. And if they don't respect it, we said the Constitution always fights for itself and it will win. We said it then, today we are telling you. The High Court actually found those provisions unconstitutional. And if any other acts continue going forward, it will still be rendered unconstitutional because your right to talk, your right to speech cannot be muzzled. That is the only way that politicians today can actually uh, express themselves even when you have issues with the issue of the tax burden, with the issue of the finance bill, they have to talk. So this fight is not only a fight for the Waishimiwas, it's not only a fight for the proponents of you know, good governance, like Gaucho here, it is a fight for every Kenyan who means well for this country. And that is the win today. The win today is not even a win for Babu Owino, Gaucho and the rest. It is a win for you and I. Because you are the people who have won. Your mouths have now been given the certificate by this court to talk, to complain, to lament. And it is up to them to either hear. If they don't, no one hears, your right at the ballot will still subsist. The court today, if you look at it, has agreed with the DPP. The DPP, and we give a lot of thanks to him, Mr. Renzo Nigonga. He looked at those charges. And especially after the humiliation of the first uh, witness who was a police officer and decided that indeed these charges were flimsy and wrote a letter to withdraw this particular matter. But the High Court also added its voice on it so that tomorrow no one will, have, will be arrested on the same count. So we have two wins. The heroes today, and we have referred to them as our heroes of today, have, through their sweat, sacrifice, and blood, managed to ensure that your voice will never be muzzled, you'll never be threatened with arrests. But more importantly, the win for today, as we are saying, is the fact that even these martyrs have not died. Because when you are fighting for independence, we lost so many people. Some we cannot know where they were buried. But God is good, the martyrs are here with you. So we expect you to treat them as heroes, as Mr. Omari has indicated, they are your heroes of today. Do not wait for when people are no longer there for you to remember that today there were people who, who actually, people suffered, sacrificed, and ensured they, they actually reaffirmed your rights under Article 37 of our Constitution. So today is a, is a, is a good day. I can say it's maybe the first birthday of Article 37 in this particular country. Thank you so much. Us as advocates, we represent clients. Today we will represent clients like Moshima Babo, we know who is in the opposition. Tomorrow he can be in government. We will represent them who will be outside here. And you can see when this matter was starting, uh, the, the government was united. Today, the way it is, we, we might be representing other people on the same. So it is important to know that. Thank you. Yeah. I can say absolutely all Kenyans are experiencing a heart of elation that cannot completely be expressed by symbols called words. But we only live to utter it with the inaudible language of the heart. We have witnessed a quasi-liberal government that is subjectively committed to individuals who are fighting for freedom than being objectively committed to serve the agenda and the promises they placed for Kenyans. And today I want to say that as comrades of the Republic of Kenya, and as all Kenyans, 
We are rallying behind these few courageous people who take the mantle to fight for us. People like Mweshimiwa Babu Oweno. And that's why I have nothing much to say, but to say Babu kwa sababu, not only in Nairobi, but also as the Nyanza Kingpin and our future president. We will all be behind him. Thank you very much. I'll vote for you. Welcome, <laughs> 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 Kenya, especially youth, Sambayo wame tuombea. Na shukuru maloyazu wetu wakina Okachi. Eh, Senator in, 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 Senator Mari ambayo barula wetu ameogopa kusema <laughs> lakini ni Senator Mari ambaye atafanya chini ya babu si nani anafanya chini ya mwingine <laughs> lakini ajua atafanya chini ya babu eh, na wanabunge na wanageto Kenya mzima na pia chama yetu ya ODM eh, Railudinga kwa kutusimamia na kutuombea na kusimama na sisi ambayo tumefika leo ya kwamba kesi ime imeisha lakini hata kama imeisha mimi nataka niambie bado hii serikali ya kwamba hata hiyo pesa ambayo tulipeana cash bill yetu ni wakina babu wangewacha kwa sababu any time tunaweza rudishwa hapa <laughs> so hakuna haja wachukue hiyo pesa watrudishie kwa sababu ile kesi ambayo tulishikuwa nayo ilikuwa ni kusimama na wananchi ambao ni wanyonge lakini sasa hivi vile unaenda mpaka wale walikuwa nasema ya kwamba tunaribu vitu zao leo pia wana feel pain zaidi so any time ndugu yangu babu amezunguka anazunguka peke yake lakini sasa ile tulikuwa pale kutini ameniambia tukimaliza hii kitu inafaa sasa turudi tena nje kwa, kwa kwa nguvu na ile naweza sema eh, ndugu yangu babu ambayo anatarajia kukuwa governor ya kwamba eh, ndugu yangu babu wino nimeona ma governors wengi hawaoni issues ambayo inafanya vijana wa kule mugoka wanakimbilia kuban mugoka na wajatuambie vijana hawa jua vijana ambao wanakula mugoka wana stress ya maisha that's why wanakula mugoka ili wasahau ya kwamba wana kazi ya kufanya wasahau ya kwamba wanafaa waoe lakini hawana kitu ya kufanya that's why wawezi hoje kwa sababu hawa wasichana wetu sio ngombe ambao wanaweza kula nyasi hao magovernors na wao government wanakimbia kuban mugoka lazima watuambie wame provide, wame provide kazi ngapi kwa vijana na hao watu ambao walikuwa nauza mugoka Waja tuambia ya kwamba wamewapea kazi ngapi ya kufanya ili wa, wa, wafundishe watoto wao wa, wapate kitu ya kukula. So minajua babu mwenye zimu kikusaidio kwe governor. Hauta kuwa wazimu uanze kuban vitu ambayo ayusiki na ile shida ambayo vijana wana, 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 wana pitia. Mambo ya mwisho ambayo nasawa kusema ya kwamba. Advocates, advocate Dan Stan Omari, advocate Duncan Okach. Advocate Ndegwa Njiru, Advocate Nekesa, for working tirelessly and ensuring that this case is won by the previously accused persons. I want to really tell Kenyans that these advocates can save you from the shackles of oppression, from the jaws of prisons. And these advocates are very, very competent. They did mention at the start of this case that this case would fall and they talked, advised the magistrate and even Dan San Omari gave an example that this could even be a case that could befall the magistrate. But indeed today we are enjoying the fruits of freedom. We are enjoying the fruits of our constitution that was promul promulgated in 2010 and we are enjoying the fruits from the constitution which are not the fruits of a poisoned tree. Very fresh fruits and that's why we are here celebrating. This is a win for Kenyans. This is a win that shows that nobody else will ever be charged with subversion, a charge that was used during the colonial period to suppress Kenyans. And today, I want to stay, state clearly that the DPP, the prosecution, was on a fishing expedition. They came up with trumped up charges, charges, a charge which was not only fatal, inept, 
incompetent, ambiguous, frivolous, fickle, vexatious, but also limping. And today we bury this charge permanently and no Kenyan shall ever be charged with subversion ever in the history of Kenya because the, the, uh, the High Court of Kenya declared this charge unconstitutional. And therefore, I really, really want to thank my advocates, my advocates once again because this win is for them. They've really worked so hard. They've really ensured that we win this case. Kenyans are also winners in this situation where nobody, as I've said, will ever be charged again because of this charge. We have decided that we will proceed to the High Court to file a constitutional petition because they are a violation of rights, our rights as the accused persons, the rights of the accused persons, we were never presented before any competent court of law within 24 hours as prescribed by the law. And therefore, we will file a constitutional petition and some of our prayers, one, will be declaration of the violation of our rights. Number two, we will seek for damages and these damages will be in form of money because our time has been wasted by this court. And number three, the costs shall be borne by the state. Let this be a warning to the state that you don't just need to arrest somebody. We were unfairly treated. We were arrested and treated like dogs without food, water, nor even our legal representation. But today, the Almighty God has made it possible and we are now very innocent. I will leave it at that. I will tell Kenyans that we shall proceed fighting for you. This was a fight for Kenyans, a fight for what Kenyans lack, and we will proceed fighting. There's another one coming soon about the finance bill. And this is going to require us to come out as Kenyans and fight for your rights because Parliament, as Baba always say, that Parliament imeshikwa kwa makende. Asante ni sana. People power. Power. People power. Power. Forward. Long live. Down with impunity. Down. Asante ni sana. Thank you so much.